Initially pegged as a run-of-the-mill mail carrier, the Hinkle HE-70 Blitz was miles away from the high-stakes world of aerial dogfights and bombing runs. However, not long after its debut in the early 1930s, this unassuming aircraft caught the eagle eye of the German military brass. Tucked within its sleek frame was cutting-edge tech from Hinkle Flugzeugwerke, turning it into a marvel of untapped potential. It wasn't long before the Blitz was thundering across the war-scarred skies of Spain, where its astonishing speed and destructive firepower dubbed it Rayo, Spanish for lightning. The Blitz stood on the cusp of redefining German air power. Yet, lurking within its streamlined hull was a critical flaw. The warplane relied on a material called Electron, a ticking time bomb that threatened to ground this high flyer for good. On December 1st, 1932, the Henkel HE-70 Blitz took to the skies for its maiden voyage, immediately showcasing its remarkable agility and top-notch performance. Designed to be manned by a duo, a pilot and a navigator, sitting one behind the other, the aircraft was as versatile as it was swift. Speed being of the essence, the designers opted for entirely retractable landing gears, countersunk rivets for a sleek, frictionless finish, and a highly streamlined silhouette with smoothly rounded wingtips. This attention to detail and commitment to aerodynamics propelled the HE-70 into the annals of aviation history, setting a standard for speed that would challenge future designs to catch up. At the heart of the Blitz's impressive capabilities was its powerhouse, a BMW 6 Series V12 liquid-cooled engine. This beast of an engine, notable for its ethylene glycol cooling system, a pioneering choice by Henkel engineers, allowed for a more compact radiator. This ingenious design choice not only shaved off unnecessary weight, but also streamlined the aircraft's profile, enhancing its aerodynamic efficiency. The Blitz's development lineage began with the HE-70A, the initial prototype, paving the way for subsequent variations. The HE-70B emerged as a passenger-oriented prototype. At the same time, the HE-70C was put through its paces as a gunnery trial platform. The fourth iteration was tailored for Lufthansa and equipped with a robust BMW engine. The fifth prototype flexed its muscles in the Luftwaffe as a nimble-like bomber powered by a formidable BMW engine. The Henkel HE-70 blazed onto the scene, its design a testament to Henkel's commitment to sleek, streamlined aesthetics. This bird boasted an engine mounted at the very nose of its slim, duralumin monocoque fuselage, slung low to cut through the air like a knife. Facing her head-on, you'd see a rectangular snout that smoothly transitioned into a rounded torso and tail, a picture of aerodynamic efficiency. Her cockpit, nestled just forward of the center line under a snug, framed canopy, was a curiosity nudged just a tad to the port side, giving her a unique profile. The HE-70's wings, crafted from spruce and plywood, were shaped like the blade of an elliptical sword, stretching out from her sides in a low-wing monoplane stance, promising swift, agile maneuvers. At her rear, the empennage tapered to a fine point, crowned by a round-edged vertical fin, with stabilizers jutting out on either side at the far end, ready to slice through the skies. Despite her two retractable main landing gears, she sported a humble tail skid instead of a wheel, a nod to her roots in an era of simpler, yet no less daring, aviation design. By 1935, the Luftwaffe had cast an eye on this fast monoplane, recognizing a diamond in the rough, ready to be honed into a sharp tool for military might. The HE-70's chapter as a civilian courier may have been brief, but her legacy as a versatile, fast-moving aircraft was just beginning to unfold. Clucking in at a jaw-dropping 377 kilometers per hour, the Hinkle HE-70 Blitz was in a league of its own, leaving most of its contemporary fighters and certainly civilian transports eating its dust. This exceptional speed was a badge of honor, so much so that the first production model, the HE-70A, was christened with the name Blitz emblazoned across the nose, a tradition that quickly became standard for all models rolling off the production line. True to its namesake, the Blitz swiftly demonstrated its mettle. In the spring of 1933, over March and April, Flight Captain R. Untucht, a name synonymous with Lufthansa for his aviation prowess, blazed through the skies, setting eight new speed records across a variety of categories with the HE-70 V2. As the Luftwaffe stepped onto the global spotlight in 1935, 
It proudly unveiled the military iterations of the Henkel HE-70, specifically the E and F series. From the outset, the Luftwaffe eyed the HE-70 as a prime candidate for light bombing and reconnaissance missions due to its exceptional speed and adaptability. The E-Series was kitted out to haul a 300-kilogram bomb load, equipped with a rear-mounted MG-17 machine gun for defensive maneuvers. On the other hand, the F-Series was tailored to the demands of long-range reconnaissance. This variant was powered by an enhanced BMW 673Z engine and crewed by a trio, a pilot, a radio operator, and a rear gunner, ensuring it had all the necessary personnel for its specialized missions. These groundbreaking planes began serving within the Luftwaffe ranks in 1934, and by 1936, they were instrumental in outfitting some of the newly minted long-range reconnaissance squadrons. The Luftwaffe High Command initially held the Henkel HE-70 in high regard, a sentiment partly fueled by the cordial relations between some of its top brass and Ernst Henkel himself. However, the pilots tasked with flying the HE-70 as a light bomber harbored reservations. They critiqued its defensive capabilities as insufficient, especially when compared to the emerging Ugers Ju-87 Stuka, which boasted superior armor and armament. The skepticism was compounded dramatically on June 3, 1936, a dark day for the Luftwaffe. General Walter Weber, the Luftwaffe chief of staff and a respected military mind, tragically died in Dresden while piloting an HE-70. The crash was attributed to a preventable oversight. The aileron locks hadn't been removed during pre-flight preparations. Though human error was to blame, the loss of Weber cast a long shadow over the HE-70 and had broader, more profound repercussions. General Weber was a pivotal war strategist and staunch advocate for developing a strategic bombing capability within the Luftwaffe. His untimely death significantly set back these ambitions, leading to a strategic gap in the Luftwaffe's capabilities during World War II. Despite its controversial reception among Luftwaffe pilots and its indirect role in altering the course of German military aviation history, the HE-70 did see action. Like many of the Luftwaffe's pre-war designs, its baptism by fire came in the Spanish Civil War when it was tested under the rigors of combat. In the autumn of 1936, the 18-strong Henkel HE-70F fleet was dispatched as part of the infamous Condor Legion into the heart of the Spanish Civil War. There, these aircraft showcased their versatility, undertaking reconnaissance and light bombing missions. Their role in reconnaissance was particularly pivotal. Equipped with the range to scout out Republican airfields, and crucially, the unmatched speed to dodge any fighter that dared to give chase, the HE-70Fs became invaluable assets on the battlefield. By early 1937, the Henkel lineage saw a new iteration, the HE-170, tailored explicitly for export and destined for Hungary. This variant was powered by a 910-horsepower, 14-cylinder Gnome Runner radial engine. Despite its remarkable power, the radial engine's bulk was a stylistic departure from the HE-70's streamlined aesthetics. Following a prototype, Hungary received 20 HE-170s, which were assigned to the first independent long-range reconnaissance group. On June 26, 1941, these aircraft were thrown into the fray against Soviet ground forces. However, rendered them overly susceptible to air attacks, leading to their swift withdrawal from the front lines after just a month of combat. The Henkel family's final offshoot was the singular HE-270, which took to the skies for the first time in 1938. This model represented the pinnacle of the series' power, propelled by a 1,175-horsepower Daimler-Benz DB601A engine. Designed for dual roles as a light bomber and reconnaissance aircraft, the HE-270 boasted a top speed of 460 kilometers per hour, setting a new benchmark for the series. The Hinkle HE-270's ambitious design, while groundbreaking, was ultimately hampered by its modest armament, merely a single forward-facing machine gun and two rear-facing defensive guns. This light armament configuration rendered it inadequate for combat roles, a reality harshly underscored by the combat experience gained in the Spanish Civil War. The Luftwaffe uncovered a deadly defect in the HE-70 series, transforming it into a ticking time bomb in the blink of an eye under the heat of battle. The cruel irony, the very feature that gave the bomber its lightning speed, was its Achilles heel, sealing its fate. The HE-70 series, despite its pioneering achievements, struggled to find favor among Luftwaffe air crews due to its perceived poor military capabilities. Increasingly, it seemed that Spanish forces were the exception, 
showing a unique appreciation for the HE-70 as a military aircraft. The warplane relied on a material called Electron, a magnesium alloy that was used in the aircraft's construction for parts of its structure due to its lightweight and strong properties, which contributed to the aircraft's high performance and speed. However, Electron had a significant drawback. It was highly flammable and difficult to extinguish once ignited. This characteristic became a crucial vulnerability in military operations. If the aircraft was hit by enemy fire or suffered an accident that breached its electron-containing components, the resulting fires were intense and burned at a very high temperature, making them nearly impossible to extinguish with the means available at the time. This not only endangered the crew, but also could lead to the total loss of the aircraft in combat situations or accidents. The risk posed by the use of electron was not unique to the Hinkle HE-70. Other aircraft and military equipment of the era that used magnesium alloys faced similar dangers. However, the HE-70's reliance on this material for crucial parts of its structure made it particularly susceptible to catastrophic fires. However, where the HE-70's military aspirations faltered, its commercial success flourished. Initially designed for civil transport, it excelled, amassing significant prestige and marking an evolution of Henkel's aircraft designs. Its legacy is notably reflected in the development of subsequent Henkel models, such as the HE-111 and HE-112, where the influence of the HE-70's design principles and innovations can be clearly traced. Over the course of its production, 324 units of the HE-70 and its derivatives were manufactured, including 28 models destined for export. Despite its once notable presence, no examples of this often overlooked aircraft survive today. Remarkably, records indicate that the 70s lingered on in the Spanish aircraft registry well into the 1950s, until they were ultimately consigned to history and dismantled. The story of the HE-70, from its rise as a commercial success to its trials in military application, serves as a poignant reminder of the transient nature of technological progress and the shifting tides of aviation history. <laughs>